Come on, pick up the phone, man. Pick up the phone, pick up the phone, pick up the phone. Josh, hey, what's up, man? So look, I know that you said that the Core 500 toaster can fit full-size video cards and AIO liquid coolers, but dude, I, I can't even fit the motherboard in the damn thing. So what's the deal? What? No, dude. I said the Core 500 is like the size of a toaster. What the hell are you doing right now? Wait, so if that's not the Core 500, the Core 500 from Fractal Design provides top-class cooling and supports full-size hardware and a compact design. Click the link in the description to learn more. Bread toasting only supported with AMD chips. What's up guys? So with new Pascal and Polaris offerings just around the corner in 2016, it hardly seems worthwhile to talk about the current generation of GPUs, which have already been exhaustively reviewed and tested since their release. Sources are actually saying that the hype train for these cards is now being driven by an amateur semiconductor. Okay, I feel really bad that I just told you guys that joke, so I'm gonna shoot myself in the face. Ow! Now at the same time, some of you thrifty builders out there might be able to snag a used video card from folks who are making room in their rigs for the new wave of GPUs. Additionally, I simply couldn't find any good online comparisons between the two models of cards I'll be pitting against each other today, which are really neck and neck when it comes to price and performance. Think Batman vs Superman with a better cast. In the green corner, we have the EVGA GTX 970 for the win edition, featuring the brand's ACX 2.0 cooler and measuring 9.5 inches long. In the red corner is the Nitro R9 390 from Sapphire, sporting the heavyweight Tri-X cooler and weighing in at just over 12 inches long, making this the bigger clearance bane of the two with its extra fan. Standing back to back, the R9 390 essentially packs double the memory advantage over its opponent in terms of both bus width and frame buffer, but the GTX 970 is definitely the more power efficient contender boasting a lower TDP and thus a lower wattage power supply requirement. It's no surprise then why the red and green rivals are driven by a pair of 8-pin and 6-pin PCIe connectors respectively. Not to mention the difference in cooler size looks like an ad for Viagra. Fortunately, they don't do this in the UFC, but let's take a look at both contenders' backsides. Our Nitro has three DisplayPort 1.2s, one HDMI 1.4a, and a single DVI. For the win brings home one DisplayPort 1.2, one HDMI 2.0, and two DVI ports. A small victory point here goes to the GTX 970 for being able to drive 4K at 60Hz over HDMI. Both cards feature rock-solid build quality, with Sapphire's larger enclosure and included backplate adding some rigidity and heft over our GTX 970. Without spending too much time on the coolers themselves, each card has its own unique assembly of heat sinks, heat pipes, and fans to keep thermals in check. What matters more here is that both of the GPUs maxed out at 74 degrees Celsius in all of my load testing, making this an even more competitive matchup as things begin to heat up. As for acoustics, let's hear what these puppies sound like under load. Sweet Mary of Coil Wine. As I'm sure you guys could hear, both cards have their own special brand of coil wine, with the GTX 970s being notably louder with a higher pitch. The R9 390 certainly has the louder fans of the two, which honestly I don't mind as much as the shrieking cry of what sounds like robot genocide. On that note, let's take the gloves off and have a look at our benchmarks, which were run on my test bed rocking a 5960X at 4400 megahertz with 16 gigs of DDR4 on a Gigabyte X99 gaming G1 Wi-Fi motherboard. I'd like to point out that both of these factory overclocked cards were also manually overclocked because overclocking. Here in 3 d Mark Firestrike Extreme we get our first glimpse of where these cards stand, and the narrow lead of our GTX 970 indicates this should be a good fight. Looking back I'd be curious to see if the 390 would pull ahead in Firestrike Ultra given its larger frame buffer to handle 4K. But diving into our first game with GTA 5, our Nvidia card scored higher average frame rates at 1080, but the tables begin to turn as we crank the resolution. Minimum frame rates on the other hand seem to be in favor of the R9 390 at 1080 and 4K, with a stalemate at Quad HD. Again, with Hitman Absolution, the GTX 970 leads at 1080 but falls behind at Ultra HD, most likely due to the R9 390's higher memory and bandwidth. I needn't remind most of you that a portion of the GTX 970's frame buffer operates at a much slower speed than typical GDDR5, which appears to be crippling the card's performance at higher resolutions in our testing. Interestingly, the Nitro scored the same results at 1080 as it did at 1440, though I can't see this being a CPU bottleneck with our overclocked 5960X, so... Uh, I, I blame Paul. He's clearly sabotaging my videos. 
Crisis 3 shows the R9 390 consistently topping its competitor across the board save for minimum frame rates at 1080. This is an AMD backed title after all. Notice again how the Nitro pulls ahead more and more as we climb the resolution ladder and stress the memory on both cards. I mean so far these GPUs have been trading blows left and right, and my last test with Metro Last Light does little to rock the boat. Despite rerunning the test several times and double checking to make sure Global VSync was disabled, both cards scored remarkably similar min and average frame rates at all resolutions. So much for a tiebreaker. Apparently when it comes down to it, both cards are solid performers that excel in different environments. When gaming at 1080, the GTX 970 seems to be the faster GPU, whereas the R9 390 has an undeniable edge at 4K, where games become more memory bound. This is kind of a moot point for Team Red though, since a single R9 390 isn't quite fast enough to drive most AAA titles at 4K comfortably. 2560 by 1440 is where we find common ground, with both GPUs performing so identically to the point where gameplay experience between the two kind of becomes indistinguishable. This is honestly such a close call that I'm really forced to split hairs here, but assuming that both of these models stay within 10 to $15 of each other, I have to give the showdown crown to Sapphire's Nitro R9 390. While gamers playing at 1080 might enjoy slightly higher frame rates with the GTX 970, more games are beginning to push the 4GB VRAM envelope, and with the increasing affordability of Hyper 1080 panels, double the, GDDR, double the GDDR5 for around the same price simply makes the R9 390 a more well-rounded option. That being said, the GTX 970 for the win edition is arguably the faster card clock for clock, and knocks the Nitro 390 on its ass when it comes to power con consumption, efficiency, efficiency, and clearance compatibility, because it's all small and stuff, it can fit more places. Those are my thoughts after today's testing guys, but let me know what you guys think of these results if you would have come out with a different verdict and why. Before you go, don't forget to toss me a big fat like on this video if you enjoyed it and check the description below for awesome saw shirts, new one coming very soon, and what else was I going to say? While you're down there, feel free to bookmark my Amazon affiliate link and use it when you buy stuff. It helps him a lot. As always, I'm Kyle with Awesome Sauce Network. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see y'all in the next video. It helps him a lot. Why are Nerf guns so fun? They're so... They're so fun! I don't think I've ever played with anything as fun as a Nerf gun. Well, nah, I take that back.